stock of the day, a bit like we did yesterday, I thought we'd look at a bit of a sector uh, that's been um, shooting the lights out. Um, has it reached the peak? Has it, uh, is it time to get out of it? Uh, coal stocks, New Hope, Whitehaven, coal prices have soared since uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Thermal coal prices just south of 400 US dollars a tonne. Despite this, coal stocks were hit yesterday along with the broader market. Uh, they've rallied a bit today. Whitehaven down 14% yesterday, up five today. Uh, likewise, uh, New Hope, very similar. So, you know, um, if you've been in coal stocks and rid them up, is this a sign to take your profits and get out? Uh, we had some Whitehaven and uh, Terracom, uh, which is a smaller um, yep. coal stock. We've sort of switched, after the dividends, we've switched. Uh, there was a, obviously a very good uh, report from Sol Pats. Um, yep. You know, we can either have the brickworks or the Sol Pats, but at the moment, just Sol Pats. Well, Sol Pats up. have a stake in New Hope as well, don't yeah, they? Well, they yeah, well, they've got 40% yeah. of that. So basically, that's how, a little bit of a softer way to play the thematic, I suppose, yeah. at the moment. Um, look, if we dip much further than here, you know, possibly be having a look at it again because their PEs are quite low, but it, I, I guess it just all depends right. on Mr. Putin in, in the end. Yeah. Um, and if we start to see, I, I think you'd be, what I've recommended to some clients is cycling, if you're cycling out your dividends, maybe putting them into, you know, the, the newer sort of uranium ETF. Um, I think that's probably going to be the, the long-term stopgap solution right. for base. Um, but if you've been in the coal stocks, do you keep them? Uh, at the Hold moment, just, I guess you just run a trailing stop. Macquarie and uh, Goldman's, obviously, there was some reports out yesterday. New, someone was calling uh, New Hope down 40% or something over the next year. So I think you've got to remain agile. Um, right. It does feel like the nosebleed section up here at the moment. Um, it's very high. Um, but yeah, while I suppose while these coal prices stay up here and and we've got um, sanctions going on, then you know there's no necessary. You don't. I don't think you okay. need to be uh, exiting so, straight away. Right. Yeah. So, so hold, they, but be agile. Yeah. Ready? Uh, <clears throat> it's sort of similar, but in in, in a different uh, appetite for risk spectrum. Um, I mean, my 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 theory on the broader spectrum uh, for of bear markets is one of a domino theory. So. Right. One domino stone after the other one uh, falls gradually. Um, I mean, early in the year, I had a discussion with investors who would assure me that oil couldn't possibly sink below $100 a barrel because right. of the situation with Russia. Well, look where oil is now. Yeah. Um, I think it's only a matter of time when the coal will fall, will trip over. Yeah. To pick that particular time when it will happen, right, that's not my, my forte, but yeah. it will happen. I mean, yeah. and why is that? Because it would be the very first time in history that we go we go through a bear market and a global recession next year, and you you can hide in a commodity. All right, I right. think it has never before never before happened. Because there's a, no <coughs> new supply coming on. Well, th the problem the problem is that when you get these very tight and artificially tight markets, very small changes can make a very big impact. Right. Okay. Right? And you see that with very small markets elsewhere as well. I mean. Um, iron ore uh, can't possibly be, be, be falling. It's now below $100. Who yeah. says it can't go back to $70, $60, $50 dollars yep. uh, in the next few years? I mean, small changes can sometimes have a big impact. Um, coming back to the comment about the, the low PEs, I just read, I wrote a story yesterday with that at this point in time, PEs have to be low for coal producers because we have peak prices. Yep. I mean, it's, it's, it's a misinterpretation of low PEs now because those PEs will be higher in the years ahead, and you buy commodities when PEs are high, not when they are low. So right. I think the risks are elevated here, but I don't know the exact timing. But right. I'm lucky in this regard because I don't invest in cyclicals. Right. So okay. I don't have I don't have to be right. in there. <laughs> I don't okay. have to be in there. So are you very similar to to Mark? If you've been in there, if I would, hold, I would, I would but be agile to get I out. I would definitely yes. I would okay. not. I would not put too much money in my portfolio in there. All right. I don't okay. think you get. I certainly don't think you, you're necessarily buying buying through record highs again. Mm. Um, so it'd be more. Yeah, you've got to remain agile because it could it could turn on you very very fast. Okay. I All think right. what what happened yesterday is, is a little bit of a warm up act for what you can mm. what you can expect when things really turn around. Right. Before you know it, you are. I mean, whatever you made can can go lost very yeah. quickly. Okay.